So at that point, you know, I guess when you get to like, you know, 15, 16, 17, you know, you can drive around or whatever. Um, are you thinking, you know, what am I going to do in university? Am I going to go run competitively? Or are you like I set on Commonwealth and stuff like that at that point? Um, yeah, I, I kind of, I mean, I knew professional, I knew there were professional track runners. Mm. I didn't really, it seemed so far away yeah. um, that when I was in in high school, early, early on in high school, I was um, far from academic. I was mm-hmm. the one causing trouble and not being in class and yeah. getting into trouble and that, but in, in all sorts of ways. So it wasn't until we were actually on holiday in Florida and we were in these, I mean, what seems like 18 hour lines for, for one ride. And there's a guy wearing an Arkansas track and field shirt um, and my dad said to me, what's Arkansas? Yeah. Um, <laughs> because we had actually never even heard of Arkansas. Yeah. Um, and so reading it, it does read it as does. Ar- it totally Arkansas. Does. Yeah. So, and we, we obviously knew of Kansas from yeah. movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, And he kind of gave us a bit of a rundown on college and their scholarships and everything like that. And at first to us, it seemed like a bit of a scam. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, somebody's going to give you f- effectively like 50 grand a year, all this gear, free housing, all of this, and t- to for you to run a few races for them. Yeah. You, it was like, I don't know, <laughs> it seems a bit dodgy. We did some more homework on it, realized that it was a kind of a legitimate thing. thing. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, the kind of realization for me sunk in that like I'm way off here um, academically getting into any mm-hmm. of these schools I'm, I'm there f- physically but I need to really knuckle down mm-hmm. so I kind of excluded everything else out of my life kind of changed social circles stuff like that and made sure that I was wholeheartedly getting involved in right. making sure I could do everything I could do yeah. to, to get a scholarship um, did that wasn't very easy, but did it. Um, the SAT, right? Uh, actually, I did a year of university at home first. Oh, okay. So kind of came in the back door yeah. um, a little bit, which helped because the SAT would have been... Um, I, I, I mean, I had to do it and I sucked at it. I did it two or three times and I just I'm not a great test taker and not really like academically fun. You know, I don't enjoy math, English or any of the others. Right. But yeah, like the SAT was just a nightmare. I think the American system is set up from day one to prepare them yeah. for this standardized test. Not so much like that in the mm-hmm. UK. Um, my young sister who ran at Tulsa as well, she had to sit at the SAT and an ACT to see right. you know, which was better. And yeah, it was hard. I mean, it's so another thing on your plate when you're studying for yeah. for something exams that are not that, and yeah. then you have to kind of also add in that as well. It's not it's not easy, but um, yeah, it was. Um, it all worked out in the end, yeah. and we kind of came out here. And um, my first my first kind of week at, at school, and they're like, "Okay, this is your you're going to go here, and you're going to pick up your stipend check." I'm like, "Okay, cool. Like, what? Where do I have to work yeah. to get this stipend check?" And they're like. No, it's, it's part. It's part of, like, it's part part of the scholarship. Of it's part yeah. of. It's part of the whole process, and I'm like, right, I, right, but like, where? Like, like, they have to work in the fitness center. They yeah, have to work yeah, in yeah. like the cafeteria. Like, where do I have to work? And they're like, no, you don't work. You don't you do just run. This is yeah. so you don't have to work. And I was like, oh wow, that's, that's crazy. Great. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Thanks. So um, that was a bit of a shock and a pleasant surprise. Um, but yeah, it was um, definitely from where I was, and I wasn't good enough to be on. I wasn't good enough in the UK. To, I was kind of in the top 10, but mm. normally somewhere between like 5th and 10th. So I wasn't good enough to be on their kind of yeah. junior progress track where they're funding stuff for you and mm. helping you out. So coming to the NCAA was, for me, by different far world, the best isn't option. It? it is a different world. Yeah. And it's hard to explain to people back home, like friends who, from me, who play golf or friends who you know run for you and just like... You don't understand. Like, and I was kind of late to it too. Like I was 21 my freshman year, and I I was lucky. I had friends who'd gone and were already out here, and and I kind of get the gist of it from them. But yeah, it's totally different to back home, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's um, it's just the system is not set set right. up to be kind of athletically. Mm. I mean, it's not. They don't have the same industry. I mean, yeah, your your revenue generating sports in the US are just as big as your professional sports. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just don't have that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. we barely have 
enough money for the professional sports in right. some instances. So, so when you went through, you know, go through the NCAA clearinghouse, which is an absolute minefield as well. Yeah. But you go through that, uh, and then you start getting offers. I mean, what, for for golf, for me, it was like submit a video. But for you, it's clearly times, right? Yeah. So it wasn't too hard. You just say, here are my times, and then hope for people to off, you know, give you offers. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty cut and dry in, in track, mm-hmm. and that's what I, I like about it. Is you know, there's there's only a couple of metrics. There's time and there's position. Yeah. Um, and so if you can prove that you can. If you can prove that you can run fast, but also win races, mm. then um, whether that race is fast or slow, um, that's what coaches want. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I had offers from from schools all over the country, um, kind of schools like Arkansas, who are power field, power, power mm-hmm. track and field schools, mm-hmm. and then and then schools like Tulsa, who are who are not or, or who weren't anyway, yeah. um, and. For me, it was a. Uh, I had worked so hard those those couple years academically that mm. I had gone from like not caring about academics at all to having to care about it yeah. out of necessity. And then it was well, actually, I've kind of put all this work in. I don't want to mm-hmm. go to a school where I'm just like just an athlete and yeah. don't get a valuable degree. Um, and so the 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 kind of stature the prep the power of the the mm-hmm. degree from TU was was what kind of drew me in as well as as, as well as the coaching staff um you know I just clicked with them right away yeah. and and then it's a small school I didn't want to go to you know I had a propensity to get into trouble so I didn't want to go to a school where I yeah. was in a class of 500 people and um it's it's kind of easier, easier to get into trouble and yeah. and and um harder to hold yourself accountable right. um so yeah, and, and I mean, having progressed all the way through to, to being an Olympian, I would have ran at T. I would, been, mm. you know, 9.9 times out of 10, I would yeah. pick Tulsa. Um, and and I'm still very happy with that decision. Yeah. So so you pick Tulsa, you jump on a plane. Does mum or dad come out with you when you, when you fly out or do you fly out on your own? No, I flew out on my own, um, purely a, a cost thing. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And... I had never actually been. Same. I didn't take yeah. a visit. Um, totally the same. Yeah. And so the first time I flew in, and, and I signed with Tulsa, and then I started to tell people that I was going to Oklahoma, and they were, they were like, "Well, have you ever been to Oklahoma?" I was like, "No." Same. And they were like, "Well, you know, what do you know about it?" I'm like, "Nothing really. I've yeah. looked at it on Google Maps a little bit." And I was so I was kind of expecting a barren wasteland of somewhat desert. Um, right because that's what I'd been told by people who had never been to Oklahoma either yeah. and had no idea. Seen um, it in movies and watched horses and carts exactly, and western exactly. movies or whatever, yeah. But when I flew in over, over Mohawk Park into Tulsa, I was like, oh, there's trees here. That's yeah. great. Um, granted, it was very hot. Yeah. And um, I got lost on my first long run. Um, a couple of... My first, my first run in Tulsa was a long run. Um, and I was trying to kind of be tough and strong and kind of not be weak to the, my new and teammates it, yeah. <laughs> and um, and I was like yeah I'll go a bit further and I'll just take the next bridge back and for those people who know Tulsa there's you know up and you can do a whole loop of the river on Tulsa in Tulsa and um, I ended up taking a road bridge back not a pedestrian bridge or not one with a yeah. sidewalk and lost the trail altogether I was told and then I find my way back to the trail but I started going the wrong way so I was out for about two hours in the in the heat and just <laughs> dying and a cyclist passed me and he was like you okay and I was like no I'm, no, I'm really mate, not I'm really not <laughs> Tossing up a storm, and he's like, "Do you need a drink?" And I was like, "Please, please, please." And and he he was like, "Where are you going?" I was like, "I'm trying to find my way back to Turkey Mountain Car Park." And he was like, "Okay, like you're probably about four miles away. Just keep like go the way I'm going. Follow me on the trail." Yeah. And I was like, "Okay." So I'm kind of plod back all the way up, and and again for those who know Turkey Mountain, the last part is like very steep uphill. And I get back to the car park and all my teammates are like, what happened? <laughs> How can you get lost? How can you get lost on a river trail that's just a loop? Yeah. And I was like, well, I've been delirious for the last hour, so I have no idea. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I, I, I got home and called my mum and I was like, I- I'm coming home. I can't do this. It's too hot. I don't want to get And she was like, okay, go take a nap and yeah. speak to me in an hour or two. And and I was, obviously I was fine, but... Um, 
yeah, it was it was an emotional first right. kind of twenty four hours. Yeah. 